everyone. Today we are going to work with syntax in SPSS. And syntax in SPSS is really easy and fun to learn. Uh, let me show you briefly how it works. Uh, we're gonna punch in a couple of commands and I don't really need to explain them because I think that they're fairly obvious. And then we're gonna bring up the syntax like this. Uh, it doesn't really work. Um, uh, well, ha! There, there we got it. All right. As you can see, it's really easy to read. It's really clear what's happening. And as uh, you you walk through the analysis, like it's much easier to read than a than a normal output. Um, so um, yeah, this is more or less everything that I want to say about syntax. You should be able to understand it from from this basic presentation. Just kidding. Actually, syntax takes some time to learn, but it's going to be beneficial to you. Let's look at why we want to do benefit, why we want to do syntax, and what the benefits of it are. SPSS syntax. Why would you want to work with syntax? Well, syntax helps you to record your project progress as you go along, and that enables you to go back in time to see if any mistakes were made earlier in your analysis that affects what you're doing later on in your analysis. It also makes it easier to communicate with others. Rather than describing a long set of uh, point and clicks, you can just share your syntax file, and your syntax file will describe exactly what you did. And this obviously makes your analysis replicable so that you yourself can replicate an analysis that you did in the past, or other people can replicate an analysis that you've done. So how do we want to work with syntax? Well, syntax entails a slightly different workflow. When we work with syntax, we first want to load our data. Then we want to construct a file to clean your data. And then using a separate syntax file, we want to run your analysis. Then we check for errors in the instructions that we gave to SPSS. And then we revise your analysis. And the reason we do this uh, workflow in these steps is to be able to isolate where are the different problems coming from. Are your problems coming from your data set? then we'd see that in step one and two. Or is your problem coming from the way you're running your analysis? Then we would see that in step three, four, or five. Let's have a look at how to work with uh, syntax in SPSS. All right, so the first thing that we're going to go and do is to turn on the journal. What is the journal? Basically, it's a running record of everything that you do in SPSS. And this can be really helpful if you want to go back in time and see what kind of analysis you run or what modifications you did to your data set. So in order to set the journal up, we go to Edit, and we click Options, and we go to File Locations, and here you can see Session Journal. We want to have this button clicked, Record Syntax in Journal, and we want to append, meaning that we don't overwrite the journal for every session, but we append it to the end of the file. And here we want to specify where you keep the file. And you can change this to another directory um, that makes sense to you. Beware, though, when you change this directory, you start a completely new file uh, and also delete the old file, so nothing of your old journal will be retained. So make sure that you save your journal in a separate folder uh, where uh, in, in a place that makes sense to you. It might also make sense to uh, every month or every quarter uh, to store away your journal, label it with the time that it covered, and then start a new journal so that you don't end up with a journal file that is several years long and thus will be impossible for you to use. So um, we click OK here. And now we're going to look at some uh, actual analysis. And I've prepared a couple of syntax files for you, so you won't need to do all of that yourself. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to my website. And it's aaronlindberg.me. And here you would want to go to the very end, and you'd click SBSS syntax, which brings you to my syntax library. Now, here, let's have a look at the data cleaning uh, syntax. You click on that one, 
this opens up a text file. Now what you want to do is that you want to copy this entire text file and then you want to paste it into SPSS. And in order to find out where to paste it, you click File, New, Syntax. And you paste it in there. All right. Now, the tricky thing here is that this syntax file will not work for you on your computer. Now, why is that? It won't work for you because the path for this command that opens a certain data set that is the path for my computer. So you need to replace it with a path that works for your computer. So I'm going to delete this, and then we're going to rewrite that command. And I'm going to show you a little trick that helps you when working with syntax. We can actually generate syntax through point and click, and that's what we're going to do now. So let's open a data set. Uh, let's see here, where do we keep these? Uh, we're going to open the Sohana uh, data set. And you click here, but you don't open it. Now here's the trick. You click paste. This pastes the command that opens this data set for you. So I'm going to cut this out. And I'm going to paste it in here. Now if you look at this command here, it's called data set name. That's something that uh, names the data set when it's loaded into SPSS. And this is a function that we use because sometimes we would want to work with multiple data sets at the same time. It can also easily cause uh, confusion. So you would want to make sure that when you activate your data set, you only have one going on at a time. So right now we're just going to activate the data set called one. And when it opens, you're going to be able to see right here which data set is active. And then in the end of this exercise, we're going to close it. And you would want to make sure that the name is consistent here. So this should be data set 1 as well. All right. So let's run this one. Now I want you to only run this command. And the way we do it is that we select it. And then you click the green arrow here. This opens the data set. And it also tells us in the output window what happened. Just open the data set and it activated under the name dataset1. All right, so what is it that we want to do here? Well, this is a basic data cleaning syntax. And I basically want to rename a couple of the variables. And this might be useful if your uh, variables are hard to understand at present. Maybe they're called v3 and v5 and you'd rather have them be name and email or something such. And we're also going to look at the variable labels. Variable labels are longer descriptions of uh, what a uh, variable contains. So let's have a look at the Sohana construct and see what we might want to rename here. So I want to have the data view. So let's Let's take two arbitrary ones here. Let's take marital and people. We want to rename those. So I'm going to go back here, and we see marital. I want that to be called marriage. And then we have people. I want that to be called individuals. This is completely arbitrary. So we're going to set this command here now. So I mark it, and I run it through pressing the green arrow. And then we look at our data set again. Aha! It has renamed them to marriage and individuals. So these are the variable names. Now we want to look at the variable labels. For marriage and individuals, we get the labels right here. And they're called marital status, and they're called people in the household. Okay. So we go back to our syntax, and here we want to put the name of the variable. So now this one, we want to put here marriage, because that's the current name of the data set. And we want this one to be called individuals. And this specifies the new variable labels. So here I'm going to write status of the marriage. 
And you would want to pick labels here that make sense for you, depending on what you're looking at. And here, I want to have the label for individuals, and I will call it number of individuals. And then, I'm going to mark this command, and I'm going to run it. Go back to the uh, data set. And you can see the labels have now been renamed to status of the marriage and number of individuals. And this is very helpful if you're working with a data set that comes straight out of Qualtrics, for example, and your variable labels and variable names don't really make sense. Then you can rename like this. And the, the benefit of doing it is in syntax is that you're able to establish a file that can rename any version of your data set. And you only have to do it once. And after that, it's just clicking a button. So for example, if you're collecting data and you're adding a couple of respondents towards the end of your data collection phase, then if you've already constructed this syntax, it's easy to run it again and automatically rename the variable names and the variable labels in that new data set. If you did it manually in SPSS, you'd have to do it all over through pointing and clicking for each version of your data set, and that takes a lot of time. So this is just a basic illustration of the things that you can do with syntax, and there will be uh, more videos uh, coming up on this, and I hope that you will uh, learn to like syntax as much as I do. Thank you, and goodbye.